world and curvy girls all around the world. I am Leah Stoltz. I am the founder and president of Curvy Girls Scoliosis Foundation and I'm so excited to be here. Um, it is Scoliosis Awareness Month and for that uh, we are hosting a live stream with longtime Curvy Girls sponsor EOS Imaging and I have Erin Cook here who is the customer program director and you know EOS has been a, a big supporter of Curvy Girls for so many years and we're so grateful for that and let's just dive right into it. Uh, yeah, tell me a no, little bit about yourself. Well, well thank you for having us for one. I'd like to say um, we're huge supporters obviously of the Curvy Girls and, and we appreciate you guys recognizing how important uh, low dose imaging is over, or over scoliosis awareness month and uh, we're super happy to be here, uh, me on behalf of the whole EOS imaging team across the world. We're based in uh, Paris, but we have offices in, in, um, in a few different places around the world, and, and we're very thrilled to be here to, to support uh, you guys and to support EOS as well, so thanks. Not a problem. Unfortunately, we're not in Paris right now. That would be nice. be, the next one we do will have to be in Paris. Yeah. I, think, I think that's the move. <laughs> yeah, that's the next spot. I yeah. Think. So I know that when I was uh, first diagnosed with scoliosis, and I remember going in uh, multiple times for my x-rays, and my mom was always so concerned, make sure the shields are going on her properly, and I honestly think that when the x-ray came and we'd be sitting there in the doctor's office, and my doctor would be looking at the curb, I think more often than not, my mom was actually looking at the shield placement to make sure that everything was being uh, taken care of. And I was like, mom, stop, stop. Like, and not fully understanding like the gravity of the situation, and you know, what it is that an x-ray is and what it can do to me as a young person. Sure. And yeah, I mean, so we, I think we're all, um, you know, here aware of the, uh, the risks with radiation exposure over time, especially for, for younger uh, patients and especially scoliosis patients and being imaged quite frequently. Um, and EOS imaging really is, is we try to be a, a leader in that category. And just to give you a little bit of background about yeah. EOS and what we do, um, we uh, make image-based uh, solutions for musculoskeletal conditions, so mm -hmm. like scoliosis and other conditions. And we make solutions along the whole pathway to care from diagnosis through um, monitoring and through treatment planning and, and post-operative treatment assessment as well. And what the main thing we manufacture, and, and I think uh, most people are aware of when they think of EOS imaging, is the EOS system, which is a, a low-dose um, uh, imaging system that's capable of full-body assessment or imaging um, the spine as well, if that's, that's all that's needed. And it takes two images at the exact same time. So it starts by at the top and scans down. And I think, Leah, maybe you have a... Yeah, so we have here what that looks like from... So this is actually the EO system. I hope you guys can see this okay. It's a we figured closer. this would be maybe one of the better ways to represent it. And just so you guys know, if you go into the, into the comments section, we do have a presentation as well. We couldn't do both together, but we have a, a presentation that we included that goes over a little more detail about the EOS uh, system and EOS solutions, and also um, some of the facts that we'll reference throughout the the, uh, the Q and A here. Um, so this is the EOS system, and a patient stand in the middle here. It scans from the top down, and it takes anywhere from 10 to 20, 25 seconds to scan, and you get two perfectly paired X-ray images. So you get one from the front and one from the side. And so for scoliosis, it gives you the, the two images you need that are important for the doctor to evaluate the curve and, and how to guide treatment. Um, so anyway, I thought this display would be, would be somewhat helpful yeah. here. And it's just the one more thing I wanted to add. I know a lot of, a lot of people always ask us, um, what does EOS stand for? And, um, and it's, it's not an acronym. EOS um, is a Greek goddess, actually. And it's so cool. <laughs> and uh, it's 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 related to light, and it's um, it means uh, she was. It, I guess the meaning is bringing hope and rejuvenation. So uh, just to give you guys a little bit of background, that's that's kind of uh, some information about how we got the name of EOS and what it means. So it's not an acronym; it's a name. EOS. Exactly, it's a name. Really cool, Greek goddess. I love that. I think that you know, picturing that going into the machine and just feeling the power of the Greek goddess as you get your EOS imaging done is, like is pretty it. cool. 
Um, so let's start with the basics. What is the difference between an X-ray and an EOS sure. image? Yeah. So in, in EOS is essentially gives you an X-ray image. It uses a different technology to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so with EOS, it's a low dose detector, and it's a, it's actually proprietary. It's a, it won a Nobel Prize um, for for receiving less radiation to generate a, an equal or similar quality image. And um, with uh, with uh, the that, that's probably the biggest difference is the detector, especially when talking about scoliosis. The other big thing is sometimes with X the traditional X ray system, you have to combine images together. So with EOS, you scan, you get two perfectly paired images. Oh, okay. It's really quick. Um, with the conventional X-ray, there is a potential that you'd have to combine two front images and two side images. Maybe sometimes they're not able to capture the whole distance. Oh. And by combining the images, sometimes there's uh, there's slight differences or errors, and they call that stitching error. Okay. Um, so, and that's an increase in exposure as well. That's Four. Well, so the, so what, okay. what EOS imaging states <laughs> is like the dose comparison is um, an EOS exam is 50 to 85 percent less radiation than a traditional x-ray exam. Those are the numbers that we state and if you go to the presentation you'll see those referenced there with with the citations to support it. Um, Great. The other cool thing about EOS is um, when you have your first exam done it's it's for um, it's uses the that that number a fifty to eighty five percent dose reduction. Okay. When you have a follow up exam, so after you've had your initial exam done, it's possible to get a microdose exam. Oh wow! And a microdose exam is is unique and only available on the EOS system, and it's another five to seven time reduction. Okay. And so. Because it because the machine kind of already has that idea, of like what your going to look like? No, not system? exactly. Okay. So, so it just it has a lower, um, it, it projects less um, uh, radiation, okay. and, and the image quality is slightly less, but it's still sufficient for uh, a physician to monitor scoliosis. Oh, wow. And so after you have your initial exam done to diagnose scoliosis, you can have, if the, if the physician agrees, you can have this exam performed that's another significant dose reduction compared to like what a regular EOS exam is. That's incredible. And that and and the number that we say as uh, with EOS is it's about a week of natural radiation on Earth. So it's it's it, the background of just walking around for a week is what one would receive from a microdose EOS exam. Because there's radiation everywhere when we're walking yeah. around. Maybe walking around in New York City. There's. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no matter where you are, there's a natural amount of radiation that you're being exposed to. So you're saying that the amount that you're exposed to in probably one week of just living your normal life is what's used in that one EOS image. Exactly. That's yep. really cool. Wow. Exactly. Every patient is different. They're, um, the amount of radiation received is different, but these, these general numbers are what we reference as a company, and you'll find on, on the presentation that, that we included below. Um, so for those who are just joining, um, if you look into the on the caption of this post, you'll be able to download a PDF um, that we might be referencing a few times, as well as please be sure to write any comments that you have in the comment section. And we'll, as we go along or at the end, we'll try to ask a few of them and shout you out for it. Um, so, why is the EOS exam specifically used for scoliosis? How it it sounds like it's used for a lot of things, and it sounds like it's especially great for that scoliosis sure. patient. It's, it's used for a lot of things, but for for scoliosis, the the real there's a few things that really make EOS unique and, and beneficial. And the thing that we've talked about a lot already is is dose the dose reduction and limiting dose for scoliosis for all the exams as we've talked about is super important. Mm -hmm. The other um, the other things is 3D modeling. Mm -hmm. So with an EOS exam, because you're taking these two images, you can actually model the spine in 3D. And that sounds cool, but what that means is um, you, the physician will get accurate measurements to monitor the curve mm -hmm. and, to, and to use that information to guide treatment. So you're not able to just see that like 2D view, you can also see that 3D rotation. 
Exactly. That's so important. So I know you have that because one. Because on a, on, a on a 2D image, um, you're not always getting the right angles and to assess correctly. It's, you, there, there are some uh, estimate or... You can, get right, a, you can get a general idea on an x-ray. You, you, it's good enough, right? Yeah. But a 3D model will give you a very precise um, a precise uh, measurement. And, it, and when we generate our 3D models, you get over 100 um, parameters that the physician can then use to, to guide treatment, whether, you know, bracing oh, wow. is the strategy or... So it's a, it becomes then a more helpful tool for the physician as well. Definitely. And, wow. I, and I think it can help patients as well because to see your, your curvature in 3D, where in 2D it may be kind of harder to, to understand, but in 3D you're able to see very precisely what your, your curvature looks like and, and perhaps if you're, you're bracing and corrections are being made over time, you can, you can, you can see that change on a 3D model. Yeah. Maybe a little better than a 2D image. Wow, that's really cool. So we talked about low dose imaging, and you said that, um, the microdose, you said that after that first EOS image is taken, the second one can become a microdose, which again is, so what's the difference between that um, regular dose and the microdose? So a regular EOS exam is 50 to 85% um, less radiation than a conventional x-ray, mm -hmm. and um, a microdose exam is another five to seven times reduction, and that's about a week of natural radiation from just walking around being on Earth. So it's a, it's a very, uh, it's, it's a safe way to image and taking all the precautions, and there's a lot of initiatives going on right now to reduce radiation exposure. Mm -hmm. um, over the years, um, radiation exposure has always been increasing, right. and for, from medical imaging and for um, scoliosis patients who undergo all these these imaging exams to monitor the condition over time, it's uh, really important to think about uh, the dose and to perhaps uh, ask the right questions to make sure that you're receiving um, a dose that, that is the safest for you. So can uh, a family member or patient go in and request that microdose um, in their, during their treatment? Yeah, I mean, okay. if, if, so if, you, if you're um, near a center that offers EOS imaging, and we have over 100 um, locations in the U.S. that have have EOS currently, and um, and you know if there's if if anyone's um, watching and you're wondering how do you get an EOS um, system near you, or if you have one near you, you can visit our website EOS Imaging EOS Imaging dot com, and in the presentation there's a link as well. Mm -hmm. um, and you go to the Patients tab, and you will see a um, a, a locator to find an EOS image, imaging center near you. And uh, if you type in your zip code, you'll be able to, to look that up and to see, see if you have one near you. Um, and again, we have over 100 in the U.S., mm -hmm. and we've expanded quite a bit over the years, thanks to you guys' support, <laughs> I'm sure. And, uh, we're, That's important to us. Definitely. And you know, we're looking to uh, you know, make EOS imaging available everywhere. Right. So that's, as a company, that's something that we're, we're uh, very excited about. And so if you have, um, if you don't have any of us uh, near you, um, shoot us an email or, or contact us on our website. We'd love to work with you and, and get in touch. And chances are we're probably talking to um, a physician that you're, you're seeing already. Yeah. And um, we could probably keep you updated on, on how those conversations are progressing. That's really cool. So some, I think it's time for some fun facts because I, I found a few things um, that I just think everyone needs to know about. So this technology, the EOS technology, originates from scientific research on radiation detected, uh, detection that was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in physics. Yeah. And I think that's really cool that this is something that, you know, you hear so much about Nobel Peace Prize and you never know how that's actually going to impact your life. And this is the way that it does. And it's you can tell how groundbreaking that kind of work is, and now it's impacting my life, it's impacting so many scoliosis and other uh, conditions, lives all around the world, and I think that's really cool. Yeah. Um, so EOS systems um, have been in North America for over a decade now. I know that the first it's system, about, yeah. yeah. The first system was in 2008, um, and is now the, 
um, available in 51 countries. So no matter where you are tuning in from around the world, there is a strong chance that there is an EOS system in a country that you live in. Um, it's, so there's over 100 systems installed in the US. Um, there's also systems in Japan, in China, and all across the EU. I think that's really cool. So again, mm -hmm. let's tell everyone if they want to know where that EOS, their closest EO system is, where would they be able to find out? Yeah, so if you go to eos-imaging.com and you go to the patient section, um, and this is for the US, um, other countries have different laws and we can't um, communicate the same way. But in the US, if, if, if you're in the US, you can go to eos-imaging.com and um, they're under the patients tab, there's a, a spot where you can, it says find an EOS exam center near you and you can type in your zip code and you will be able to, to look up the ones that are closest to you. And then in, like we just mentioned, Leah, if you don't see one near you, mm -hmm. uh, please reach out to us. We'd love to, to work with you and update you on what's going on in your yeah. area. Very cool. Um, so I see a question that I think is a perfect time to ask. Natalie Johnson is wondering about um, insurance coverage for the EOS imaging. Yeah. So the really the cool thing about an EOS exam is it's built under the same um, codes. They're called CTT insurance codes, codes right. as a regular um, X-ray exam. Mm -hmm. So for patients, it's the it's it's one the same, but in the image you get is is uh, a NEOS image, obviously, but it's it's the same insurance codes um, for both, which is which is good for patients. Great. So someone would be able to get that EOS image um, done and you know be able to use that no matter where they are across the US and in the same yeah. way that they'd be able to um, get that x-ray done definitely yep awesome that's really that's good a great to know. question that's good that you know insurance is just you know understands that and that you guys were forthright in thinking of it you know wanting to make sure that there were no insurance impediments yeah. um, in order to make sure that you're making that best product for the patient. Definitely, yeah, so it's, it's definitely amazing. great for patients. Good, great. Um, so, in general, what are some concerns with medical imaging that patients should be aware of? Sure, that's also a really good question. Um, so, uh, we, I think we all know that the, the long-term effects of radiation are, is bad for people. Um, in medical imaging, it's increased over the years. And for scoliosis patients who are young and their cells are growing and developing, they're more sensitive to the, the effects of radiation. And especially for um, uh, kids with conditions like scoliosis that have to get imaged very frequently. Mm -hmm. It can as be much, as much like six times a year, four yeah. times a year, and that adds up. Right. And especially for a young developing body right so the risks are are, are higher for for that population and so anything we can do to minimize the risk to that pop that population mm -hmm. is something that um, all healthcare systems and providers and physicians are thinking about and looking to to do better and so when EOS came around mm -hmm. in 2008 it was a it, there's many different things that make EOS unique but yeah. the low dose component for scoliosis is a very big uh, uh, benefit mm -hmm. and it's been impl implemented at a lot of different facilities for that reason. Um, and then um, more recently the microdose feature came about and that really kind of oh, brought... So microdose is recent? Not super recent but okay. it wasn't, you know, it was added as time went on and, okay. and, and definitely is, is another big uh, reduction in radiation exposure and another huge benefit you know I, I it's it's really exciting for us to, from EOS to be able to provide that kind of technology and right and to to uh, scoliosis patients and and we're excited to continue as we as we continue as a company as well meeting in that area yeah. yeah so you talked a little bit about how um, the EOS 3d model is really great for a bracing patient for that physician who's looking at who's looking at bracing their patient sure um, because of that 3D view. So can we talk a little bit how it might also help um, when going into surgery for that surgeon? And right. uh, let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Sure, well, you know, first, you know, we, everyone always wants to avoid surgery unless it's absolutely needed. Mm -hmm. uh, but when it is needed, um, we've, 
we've partnered with surgeons to develop um, surgical planning software. So using our 3D models that have all this precise information um, about your spine, we, um, we've now provided this to surgeons and then now they have the ability to simulate the operation and to, wow. and to anticipate um, results. Wow. And so, um, yeah, with the surgical planning software, it's, it's, it's a new tool that can be um, really help evolve care for, or we hope it can help evolve care for, um, for surgery when needed. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we're, we're partnering with a lot of leading surgeons on, on these solutions. And we're very excited for, for what the future holds there and what, what it, what it offers today. So, so that comes standard <laughs> with an EOS machine, it, like it, in someone's facility, like they, that doctor has access to those yeah, tools. That's one of the cool things about having an EOS system is you have access to these, these kinds of advanced, um, solutions, if you will. That's incredible. And so yeah. um, for us as a company, that's something that we really uh, are looking at, to the future and of what we do. And even today, that even in our future, this is a big part of what we provide, not just diagnosing and monitoring, but really providing a, a solution for patients, whatever their need is, helping improve care along the whole, whole pathway. Wow. Yeah, that's really great. Um, so... Let's talk about um, what steps families and the, everyone watching right now um, or watching this at a later date, they've gone on the website, they've gone to eos-imaging.com and they've looked for their closest EOS system and it is very far away. What do they do? How do they advocate? How do they ask for it for, in their local hospital, in their local clinic? Yeah, Let's, yeah. Well, I would, I would just like to start by saying that we get emails all the time from, yeah, from patients, sure. which is cool and we really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, and I've heard stories of, of families driving two hours to get their EOS exam done. I'm sure. Which, oh, we, yeah. which everyone in the company really feels the impact of, of what we're doing when we hear stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and it really makes us appreciate what we're doing. It's but, important. But when we, and yeah, so it's important to get um, systems closer to people if possible. Yeah. And, the, the number one thing I could say is um, to reach out to us. And if you go to our website in the contact us page and you get in touch, um, you let us know who you are and where you're at, we can update you on who we're speaking with and uh, what stage of the process it is because we're talking with a lot of, of right. centers right now. Um, but, you know, that would be the number one thing I, I would suggest. I would also, you know, bring up, uh, ask for an EOS exam too. If that's if you if you're not sure if your facility has it, make sure to ask your your doctor about that. Um, but yeah, I would say the number one thing would be to reach out to us, and we would be more than happy to update you on the conversations we're having because we do have a lot of conversations going on. Um, Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. So um, again, if you're just tuning in. If you have any questions, be sure to ask them in the comments. I see some good questions. I'm going to scroll to see some more. Um, do This comes from Michael. Do orthopedists and radiologists need any kind of special training in order to properly uh, read or to use it? Or, sure. Yeah. We do provide training to um, you know radiologists, to physicians, to uh, rad techs. So everyone that will be interfacing with an EO system, we do mm -hmm. provide training. Um, it isn't like anything crazy. It's it's you know maybe a couple week or two of training, um, but actually for everybody, the, one of the big benefits of EOS that we haven't maybe talked about a ton is how quick the exams are, how fast they are. Yeah, so we haven't you, talked about that. When you, get in the, when you get in the EOS system, um, it takes ten to twenty seconds to scan from. The top down, and then your exam's over, and That's then you awesome. get both both your images are, are taken, and they're clear in one complete image. And I want to put the the picture up that we had because I know we put it up at the beginning just for anyone else who's just tuning in. Um, so this is what the EO system looks like, and as you can see, this is not scary by any means. I think you know you can you, you picture a lot of things. Like I, I know when I was 11 years old, and I knew that I was going to have to go in and get an X-ray, and that was the very first X-ray I ever had in my life. I didn't know what that meant. I'd always heard that in like superhero comics and you hear these scary things and uh, you know, 
I had a very wild imagination. Yeah. But if I walked into a room and they said, touch your, hand, touch your hands to your shoulders and take a step in here, I, I would feel okay about this. Yeah. Well, that was one of the things that, you know, when, we, when EOS was designed, we, we thought about the patient experience and something we tried to, to uh, make as, as good as possible. And so when a patient walks into an EOS exam, it, it takes about 10 to 15 to 20 seconds to scan. And this, this light right here is actually the scan. And this oh, will wow. go down. And then uh, you're done. So it's, it's a really quick process. It's, our goal is to make it as easy and seamless as possible and, and to make it uh, not scary mm -hmm. and to make it efficient and make it safe with a uh, low dose as well. So all these things, we, I think it really fits in very well for caring for scoliosis. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think, you know, it's been represented with all the different centers out there that look to, to get an EOS to treat scoliosis. Is there a minimum age that one has to, or height that one needs to be in order to? Um, um, there are some for certain, um, like 3D modeling um, and stuff like that. There are okay. certain ages that are limited. Um, if you go to our website, we can, we can we have that information provided there. If you go to our Contact Us page, we'd be happy to, to send that to you um, as well. But um, there, there, um, there are some, but it's it's most of them are related to the three D modeling. But we'd be happy to maybe after this we'll post it as a comment. Yeah, yeah. that'd be really great. Um, so as we discussed, there are over a hundred EO systems around the U S. So please be sure before your next uh, scoliosis appointment, uh, head to EOS dash imaging.com and find out if there's one near you um, in order to get that um, in order to make sure that you're getting that low dose image and um, for those who are tuning in a little bit later let's let's refresh and say uh, what is that what is the EOS imaging and, and the percentage of exposure um, compared to the X yeah yeah Let's sure kind of refresh that yeah so the EOS system is a low dose um, imaging system that scans the patient from the top down and creates two x-ray images. Mm -hmm. Those images can be turned into 3D models to help um, guide treatment. And um, the percentage of dose reduction compared to a regular x-ray exam is 50 to 85 percent. Um, so, and then EOS has a setting called microdose, and this is only available on the EOS system, and that reduces the uh, radiation exposure another um, five to seven times. And uh, that's about a week of background radiation from Earth. So, that's incredible. Yeah. That's really great. So I'm, um, oh, <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm on my note, I know she's from the Philly chapter. We are so grateful for EOS. And, you know, I, I think that's a perfect way to wrap this up. I, yeah. You know, as it's, it's a major concern for parents and for um, patients when we grow up, when we finally realize, realize the gravity of, being exposed to x-rays, you know, four to eight times a year sometimes um, for however many years that you're mm -hmm. in treatment for adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, that could be maybe four years of treatment um, for juvenile scoliosis or uh, congenital scoliosis. That could be since you're two or three years old like, until mm -hmm. you're about 15 maybe. That's, you know, that's a lot of exposure. Yeah. And I think what you're doing is so important to our journey and so important to our, you know, our whole health. Um, because it's, <laughs> it's important that, you know, our doctors are thinking about not just treating that spine, but treating it in the way that's going to, um, it's for longevity. It's yeah. like, how am I going to make sure that I'm keeping you safe and healthy right now, but for years to come as well? Yeah. through your entire life. And I think EOS imaging is a vital, vital part of that journey and that treatment plan. Yeah, well said. And I, I just want to thank uh, the Curvy Girls organization, everyone who tuned in tonight. And um, We're really proud and happy to, to partner with you guys and for, for both of us to recognize the importance of uh, low-dose imaging, especially um, being Scoliosis Awareness Month. Yeah. And... and we're again very happy to be here and provide our, the information about EOS. And I would suggest that if you haven't already to 
in the comments, you'll see a presentation about EOS. It's very short, and if you just want to go through it, you'll see all the benefits of EOS for, uh, for scoliosis. Mm -hmm. and, um, and again, thank you very much for having us. We're, we're very excited on behalf of EOS to be here to represent. I'm happy to represent the company, and, and, thank, you. and thank you. Yeah, it's been great. So thanks, Leah. Thank you so much. Thank you for all of your support. Absolutely. It. All right. This will be available on Facebook if you just tuned in halfway. You can watch the entirety of it. It'll be posted live as soon as I press the end button. It'll be up on YouTube as well. So be sure to check it out. Send it to all your friends and family. Maybe even send it to your doctors. And uh, I will see you soon. Bye, everyone. And Bye, have a great Scoliosis Awareness Month.